So we are finishing up graphing polynomial functions. At this point, we've learned the end behavior, how to find and graph the y-intercept, how to find the zeros, and how those give us our x-intercept, as well as how the multiplicity affects our graph. So basically, we're putting all of those things together to figure out how to graph polynomial functions. So let's outline those steps. In step number one, we want to plot any of the easiest points that we can come up with, including the x-intercepts, all of them, and that depends upon the degree, and your one y-intercept that you can find. Then from there, you put your end behavior on the graph, and you fill in with any other information that you may know. Now, in the last video, we learned that if a zero or if an x-intercept has an odd multiplicity, then it's going to go through the x-axis at that point. And if it has an even multiplicity, then it's going to hit the x-axis at that point, but not cross through it. It's going to bounce back from the same direction it came from. Another piece of information to know is the number of turning points it has, meaning the number of directions your graph can turn. So it's always one less than your degree. For example, if it is a degree two polynomial, it's going to only have one turning point. And we know this for sure because it's going to be a parabola. It only turns directions once at the vertex. If it's a degree five polynomial then, it can have four turning points, meaning your graph can turn, it can, not necessarily that it will, it can switch directions four different times. So if it's starting here, it'll switch directions once, twice, three times, and then a fourth time. So it will switch directions one less than degree. Now, if that information there, steps one through three C, is not enough information for you to get a full graph, you are always more than welcome to plot more ordered pairs than needed. Just start picking strategic X values and see the Y values that go with it and plot that point or plot that ordered pair on the graph. So I have two examples of this here. So let's start with the first one f of x equals x to the third minus 9x. Now let's start by finding the end behavior and eventually we'll put this on the graph. So my end behavior comes from my leading term, the one with the highest degree or the highest exponent. That's my leading term there. This happens to be a positive odd, which means it's going to start down on the left and it's going to end up on the right. So we know what's happening at the very left part of this graph and the very right part of this graph. Now let's use our intercepts to figure out what happens in the middle. The first intercept that is easiest to find is the y-intercept, and we do that by plugging in zero to our equation. Now if it's an expanded form, the way that this one is here, you'll always get out your constant term. And in this example, I don't have a constant term, so my constant ends up being zero. So my y-intercept in this example is zero, zero. The next question that we have is how many zeros do we have? And that depends upon the degree of the polynomial. We already said that this is a degree three polynomial, so that means that we should have three zeros but some of them may be duplicates, so we'll have to figure out that before we officially answer that question. Now let's find those zeros, and we do that by setting our equation or our function equal to zero. Since this is a polynomial format, which they all will be, the easiest way to solve this equation is by factoring. So let me take out an x, that leaves me with x squared minus nine, then my x squared minus nine is a difference of squares, so I can factor that as x plus three, x minus three. So that gives me the zeros of x equals zero. x equals negative three and x equals positive three. Or if I wanted to put those in ordered pair or intercept notation, that would be zero, zero. And of course, if I have a y-intercept of the origin here, then I definitely should have an x-intercept of the origin here. 
my other two x-intercepts are negative 3, 0 and positive 3, 0. Now, each of these were only degree 1, so that means that each of them were only multiplicity 1. And I'm going to use that when I do this on my graph. All right, so let's sketch a possible graph here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my intercepts, both my y-intercepts at 0, 0, and my x-intercepts, the one at the same place, my 1 at positive 3, 0, and my 1 at negative 3, 0. Now let me use my end behavior. So on the very left, I know that this graph is going down. And on the very right, I know that this graph is going up. Last but not least, I know that since each of my zeros were multiplicity 1, it's going to cross through my graph at those points. So it's going to cross through my x-axis here. It's going to cross through my x-axis there. And it's going to cross through my x-axis there. So my possible sketch of this graph is going to look like this here. The only other information that you may want to figure out is, in fact, how high does this graph? Notice we don't have any y values here. And how low does this graph, again, no y values here, actually go? So we can figure that out by substituting in a couple extra ordered pairs. So I can substitute in maybe x equals negative 1 or negative 2 or even in between negative 1.5. Let me just do negative 1. So f of negative 1 here gives me negative 1 cubed minus 9 times negative 1 or negative 1 plus 9 or 8. So that gives me that I have an ordered pair on this graph at negative 1, 8. So that tells me that this graph goes at least up until 8. So I've plotted some tick marks on here, and I said again I have the ordered pair of negative 1, 8. So I have this point here. So I know that my graph has got to follow the same direction, but it's also got to go through that point. So it goes a little bit higher than maybe what I expected it to. I can also figure out more information by plotting in other ordered pairs. So maybe negative 1 wasn't good enough. Maybe let's also plug in negative 2 here. Now skipping the work that goes with that, I found that f of negative 2 gives me 10. So that gives me a second ordered pair that I can plot as well. So that gives me an ordered pair here at negative 2, 10. And now I can see how this graph actually fits through. So connecting all of my dots and all of my known information, I can see the left-hand side of this graph goes something like this. Same thing on the right. If I wanted to figure out how far down this graph actually goes, I could plug in some ordered pairs. So skipping the work here, I figure out that f of positive 1 is equal to negative 8. And f of positive 2 is equal to negative 10. I can also put those ordered pairs on this graph. So I have 1, negative 8. I have 2, negative 10. And I can connect the dots going by that. So this here is an official sketch of this graph that I'm going to. So I came up with a rough sketch by just using steps A through C, but I come up with an exact graph by using more ordered pairs if I don't feel like my rough sketch is good enough. Let's work through a second example here. And I suggest that you pause the video and work through all of these steps and sketch a rough sketch of this graph on your own. And then I'll come back and walk through all the steps with you. First, the end behavior. I find that by looking at my leading term of each piece, since this one is in factored format, and that would give me negative 0 0.1 times x times x times x to the second power, which give me negative 0 0.1 x to the fourth, 2, 3, 4, if I added all my exponents. This is a negative even. Even polynomials end in the same direction. Since it's negative, that means it ends both down on the left and the right. 
the y-intercept, I plug in 0 to the equation. This time I'm going to use my constant terms, the ones without any variables attached. So that's negative 0 0.1 times negative 1 times 2 times negative 4 squared. So that gives me negative 0 0.1 times a negative 2 if I multiply these two times a positive 16 if I square that out. 16 times negative 2 gives me negative 32. And negative 32 times negative 0 0.1 gives me a positive 3.2. So my y-intercept is at 0 and then 3.2. How many zeros does this function have? I'm going to answer that second, but first let me find the zeros. I do that by setting each of these factors equal to zero. The first one doesn't make any sense. The second one, x minus 1 equal to zero, gives me the zero of 1. x plus 2 equal to zero, that gives me the zero of x equals negative 2. And x minus 4 squared equal to 0, that gives me the 0 of x equals 4, but I have it twice. So that is actually multiplicity 2. So if it wants to know how many zeros it has, it officially has 4, but we'll actually only be plotting 3 of them. So we'll only see 3 of these zeros as x-intercepts on the graph. And their ordered pair format is 1, 0, negative 2, 0, and 4, 0. So let's put this all on the graph. So plotting my points first, let me start with my x-intercepts this time. I have an ordered pair at 4, 0, at 1, 0, and at negative 2, 0. I also have a y-intercept at 3.2. Let me fill in with my end behavior. I know it's going to go down on the left and down on the right. Okay, starting with my leftmost zero at negative two, that only had a zero of multiplicity one, which means it's got to cross through it. It's got to hit my y-intercept here, and it's got to connect my x-intercept there. So I'm going to suggest that it looks something like this. My next zero of 1 is multiplicity 1, which means it will cross through this zero. Now it's going to hit my next x-intercept of 4, 0, and that was actually multiplicity 2, which means it does not cross through my zero there. It will bounce back the same direction that it came from. So it's going to hit my zero there, and it's going to bounce back the same direction that it came from. So here is a rough sketch of this graph. Again, this is a very rough sketch. If I want to figure out how high this graph goes or how low this graph goes, I can always double check that by plotting in some extra ordered pairs. So I've worked through my couple examples using the steps that we've outlined for you before. And so this finishes up how to sketch graphs of polynomial functions.